Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharti, and welcome to TFR Insights, a show where we deep dive into emerging technologies. In today's episode, we are hosting Airbyte, creators of an open source data integration platform. The company recently raised uh, $5.2 million in seed funding. To learn more about the company, this investment, we have two guests from the company, John Leffler, co-founder and CEO, and Michelle Tricot, co-founder and CEO at Airbyte. First of all, John, Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Swapnil. Hi, Swapnil. Thank you for receiving us. So you're both co-founders, creators of the the, the company. Uh, I will start with you, John. Tell me that uh, what was the drive behind this company? What problem, what challenge you saw in the problem? And then you collaborated, Michelle, to create this company. So let's start with the story of the company. And you guys can take turns wherever you feel fit. So I'll start with my story and Michelle uh, will add his own. His uh, his story is a large contribution as well. Um, so Airbyte is actually my fourth startup. And in my third startup, I was building um, a software project management tool on top of every engineering tool of a, set, uh, of a team. So instead of using six or seven tools for the same team, you would be using our own only one. And we had to build uh, a lot of ETL pipelines to do that. And it took us a full year with the whole team to build that. Um, and that was like um, one of the reasons why it was really di difficult for us to get to the product market fit. So I was very sensitive to uh, data integration at the time. And uh, Michel, I'll let you tell your story about data integration. So yeah, on my side, I actually always been uh, working uh, with data since uh, like I would say 2007. I started on financial data, integrating data across multiple uh, data sources. And in 2011, I moved in the US and I started in back in the day, a small startup called Liveroom today. It's a public company. Uh, and over there, I basically built a whole team that managed the thousands of integration, like inbound and outbound integration, coming in and out of Liveramp. Liveramp is this middleware in the middle of ad tech and martech, so it has to interconnect and connect to every single player in the industry. So we had to um, to um, uh, to build this infrastructure for managing connectors, and. Every day, it would be like hundreds of terabytes of data going in and out of LiveRamp. Um, and yeah, so let's say both John and I had had a fair share of dealing with integration. And what we realized is that at some point, every single company is recreating the same pipes, the same data pipes to replicate the same data movement. And that was basically the, the genesis of, um, of Fairbyte. Uh, I want to understand the data integration landscape a bit. Uh, can you just uh, talk a bit about um, the state of data? Because companies, we are today looking at multi-cloud strategy where, you know, you are running your workload in different clouds, uh, but where is data? You are building data lakes at times, but sometimes you want to run analytics, then what are you doing? Are you moving your data from data lakes to your other one system, or other system? It becomes too complicated where you want to plug into things. Uh, some cloud may not allow you to do that. So can you talk about the the challenge that you did uh, where you can tap into data, extract the value out of the data wherever you want versus copy and move data? So let's talk about that first. What has happened over the past five years is basically like the new generation of warehouse has enabled new categories of people to actually leverage, get insight from data, have operational workflow around data. But this is a processing engine and you still need to get the data in. And at that point, the, the problem that all these people and new role have been facing is I have data across so many silos, whether it's on a cloud-based product or it's in the database, an internal database, my finance department, and I want to get all this data in. And that is basically what, uh, what we mean by like the data integration and data movement, which is how do you bring all this data, how do you move all this data into one centralized place so that the most, uh, um, like the, the people who is the most uh, capable of extracting insight can actually do it and can do it in autonomy. 
without having to involve a large engineering department. Uh, and that was really like the vision behind Airbyte when we when we started it is enabling these new roles and um, making this new data infrastructure uh, like the the core of what uh, we are part of. How much open source you folks do, or what is the role of open source within the company? How much involved you are with open source projects? So uh, we are right now entirely open source. All what we have built is open source, and we are focusing on the community edition uh, until May 22. So everything will be open source until then. Um, the business model is really like uh, an open core one. So every, when we address the needs of an individual contributor, so just replicating data, integrating with your data stacks or with Airflow, DBT, this will be open source. And what we have in mind for the enterprise or as the, the company edition, so anything that addresses the need of the company, then will be licensed. So that includes posting and management uh, with an SLA. That also includes data quality, privacy compliance, uh, SSO, user access management. So this is the first business model that we have in mind. Uh, a second one that was brought to us by the community is about uh, empowering our users to offer integrations to their own clients through our API. Uh, so the first one, we call it more like the analytics use case, and the second one is more like a oper operational use case, where we just power every integration, but on the back end. Right. And the space that you are operating, in, first of all, the cloud native Kubernetes space is a very crowded, very busy space. Uh, there are a lot of companies, there are a lot of projects that are doing uh, the same thing. It's, it's not exactly the same. Some things overlap. There are a lot of gaps. Some companies are trying to fill the gaps. So there are a lot of things. That, but if you look at other competitors, let's say, you know, um, Fire, you know Fivetran or Stigeta, how do you differentiate yourself while leveraging some of the same open source technologies? Talk about that. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons why we approach Airbyte uh, as an open source project is if you look at every places where a company has data, it's like thousands of different places. And it is not possible for one single company, like one single vendor to actually address a thousand or 10,000 of these connectors. Because at the end of the day, they will always have some ROI consideration about whether I should build it and maintain it or should I just let them do it. And that's actually what we've seen when we were doing our uh, user and customer discovery, which is all of them are paying for a commercial solution, but also all of them are actually building this connector, this connector on the side. And what we believe is that the open source uh, approach is the only one today that can actually help company to address the long tail of integration without having every single team to replicate the same work over uh, and across every single companies. So that is why open source, we believe, is for this particular problem, the only approach that is, uh, that is gonna succeed over the long term. I would add that we are making it easier to build and maintain connectors. So if you face the choice of, well, you need to build a connector because it's not supported by your vendor, which is, uh, which happens a lot. At that point, we want it to be an obvious choice to do it on Airbyte. And as soon as you use Airbyte, you'll see, oh, actually, I can replace my other pipelines with Airbyte and have every data integration onto one uh, platform. So that's, that's our goal here. And the real problem with connectors is not really to build them. Like building them, you can do it. You can look at an API page. You can look at how a product works. The real problem with connectors is how do you actually uh, maintain them over the long term? Because you depend on sources you have no control on. So you always have to adapt the connector to uh, continue to work with the, the newer version of an API. And by making it open source, we actually can crowdsource uh, like the maintenance of these connectors. And as uh, Sean, you were mentioning earlier that um, it's, uh, your, one of the business model is to build it like a service, uh, you know, with SLAs and things like that. So that is also important with open source because 
open source kind of solves the day one problem, but the day two problem is manageability, you know, customization, you know, the functionality they use. So that is a perfect mix of blending both together too. So you also be able to differentiate yourself, but at the same time, you are actually serving the customer their problems, removing all the complexity that they have to face and so that they can focus on the actual work they have to do. Now, um, you uh, have also raised, you know, uh, 5.2 million in seed funding. So let's talk about the growth plans you have. Where are you planning to invest this? Are you going to build more engineering prowess uh, or you want to build a bit of more sales and marketing teams? Yeah. So our goal today is we are on our way to become like the standard for, da for data movement. And our vision is that open source is the way to do it. So over the next year, our uh, investment are going to be on the core product and on building the community and ensuring that we are working with a delighted community. Um, and all of the, our efforts are going to be on that front, like building the, the community edition to improve adoption and to increase adoption and making sure that we become the standard. And on the other side, also working on, on the community. Um, so that will be our focus for the next, uh, for the next year. Uh, we're also working with other companies on the side for like the support and SLA piece, but the priority is the, the community edition today. When you talk about community edition, are you going to go and build it yourself or you're also look because it's open source, you're also looking at engaging open source so that it's driven by the community, not just by the company? Yeah, correct. Uh, and actually, that's a big investment for us. Is And today, twenty I would say 20% of our connectors were actually contributed by the community. And we want to increase that number over the, the next year. Uh, so let's talk about, as a new company, you have raised funding. What are some of the challenges that, John, this is your first company. What are the, some of the challenges that you face in building such a company in not only a challenging market uh, because of the pandemic, but also a very crowded and busy space. So that's my fourth startup. So um, I would say open source is really different in the sense that uh, you will have some inbound uh, like you've never experienced if you really address a problem. So it's really about, um, and you'll see the use case coming to you while if you build a SaaS, there will be a lot more effort in outreach, in identifying the use case and addressing this use case. Here we're more uh, about uh, addressing an engineering problem that we see a lot everywhere. And then we see the use case coming to us and so up to us to really prioritize in the good way and not be lost in like some edge cases. So open source is very, very, very different on that point. I think there are uh, there are several actors on uh, trying to solve that particular problem. Um, I think the the team that we've assembled today is extremely experienced in solving this particular problem and also doing it at internet scale. So it's not just building a connector that's going to work once in a while. It's also about how do you scale them and how can you build this system so that it not just work with a small startup with very little data, but it can also work with the enterprise and massive amount of data. So I think at that point, and part of the team, we have also former people from uh, from LiveRamp who've built this type of infrastructure. So expertise, and uh, like technical expertise and uh, the expertise on, of the market is, uh, is a big asset of, uh, of Airbyte today. And when I was talking about the investment, you mentioned the, the focus of the investment is going to be on building a community first. But if you look at the company itself or the product roadmap, what is in the pipeline? How does your roadmap look like? Or when you reflect on it one year from now, where do you see yourself? Right now, like we are, we continue to build and add more uh, um, feature to the core. First, making sure that it can scale, uh, making sure that we can connect to more sources. Our goal is to be to three, at 300 connectors at the end of the year and enabling more of the community member to, to contribute. But in terms of the, the product roadmap, it's really, I mean, then it's to really focus on what are the enterprise's features. So we're already starting to build some of them uh, in, the, in the back, but it's really about like data security, data compliance, data quality, and how can you ensure that once the data has hit your data warehouse, you can actually trust that data. And so, I think at that point, it's really about 
ensuring that people who are using this, uh, the data that they've replicated, that they can trust that data and they can get all the insight with no matter how the, the data is changing on the source side. Uh, I would add that, um, so in, in here for now, so right now we have uh, 12 people working full time with us and we'll, our goal is to reach 25 by next year. Um, so like the velocity of features is so much to build. Uh, we'll be increasing that. And on the community side, we really t uh, are focusing on prod usage. So having pipelines active within companies. And we hope that we have about 200 through to 300 different connectors. Right now we have 50 and about more than a thousand active companies. So companies using us in prod. Oh, uh, that's what going to be my next question. That was that how much awareness is there about the company, or if there are already use cases, if you can mention. Well, we got uh, six hundred companies that have used us to to replicate data successfully. Uh, so that's what I was calling uh, to, uh, mentioning about the inbound flow you have. So there's that's a lot, and a part of that is uh, about almost a hundred that are using it like on a daily basis or so on prod. Jean Michel, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Airbyte, share your story, and also talk about the challenge that the community is facing uh, with uh, moving data around or you know extracting value from data. And I look forward to talk to you again. So thank you, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.